welcome back to my channel for those who are new here my name is lucy and on today's video we're just going to share some of the culture shock that i found in or rather i experienced since i came to south sudan and i don't know whether there's still shocks but it's just how uh i mean you you you, you should know well that uh not all countries are the same or we don't do the same things different country do their there's a way everybody do their own. so like Kenyans are known for like their tea lovers right and like our tea is different our tea is different we the way we do our tea is not the way everybody do their tea in different countries. Um, like, for instance, you have the English tea. Like the English tea, you, you have the black tea and you just add in what milk. So the way we do, the way we cook tea in Kenya is different. You have you boil the milk, you add in water, some a little bit of water, depending on. Um, <laughs> yeah you add water and um, tea leaves so the way they do it here in South Sudan is they have the black tea and what I've seen and what was uh, also a bit okay at the, at, the, at, the, at the first time I was having difficulties then of course uh, they were able to as in, I thought maybe that's the way they do their things. So maybe, oh, here people just only take uh, powder milk. So here powder milk is what they prefer using. So they have the black tea then they use the powder milk to make their tea. And as opposed to the way we do it in Kenya, because in Kenya you boil the milk, you add in water and add in the tea leaves and colors and you have your tea so apart from tea these guys south sudanese love sugar like they cannot have their tea without sugar and it's not just sugar like a lot of sugar like it's like that they're, they're taking i don't know they're sugary people they're um, yes how do you put it like the way you'd say somebody's a salty person but these guys are sugary like their tongue is so sweet so and it's they take a lot of sugar that is what i've noticed over the period i've been here and yeah as opposed to Kenya. something else that i found very interesting about this place is the access ease of access access roads are so many like so many and that's something different from way back home like like the, the area i live in and not just this area everywhere like the places i've been around this town i've seen that there's a lot of access access roads are a lot like in case there's fire there's a fire outbreak um Fire brigades, eh? Is it a fire brigade? Yeah, can easily access the house because yeah, we could not do a lot of access. Access roads are so many, which I found very interesting and very good. So food. So I found the, the South Sudanese food very interesting. The first time I landed to this place, I was. I only, I was, I, like, I, I, I thought maybe I could find Ugali, but no, I didn't. I, there's what they call ish, ish, ish. So I, I took ish with uh, chicken. And then they do their chicken here is that they either roast it, marinated and roasted, or it's deep fried. And it's. One of the things I've also seen that is um, popular, 
it's widely taken here. Apart from Ash, uh, there's Kisra, Kisra Be Kudra. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to insert the, the names here too. I might be pronouncing it the wrong way. They also have full masir. Those are some of the foods they eat here. And at the beginning, it was so hard to fit in because I've never eaten that. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Ugali chick. So, but again, with time, because okay, there are a lot of foreigners here. So, the different type of foods you can get around. Um, and then there's also one thing that I was so keen about when I was coming here is uh, just to find out whether they have maize flour so that I don't get homesick and I'm Miss Ugali. So they have they have the maize flour, but the maize flour here is again different because it's too I don't know whether I don't know whether I say soft. It's, it's too light. The flour is too light, too soft. The, compared to the, the the maize flour we have back at home, and uh, and I think also I I'll have to insert the picture of the way the the oluthkon, call it oluthkon in in Luo. They have a different. It's not the normal oluthkon we use back at home. Though we also have the the one we use back at home here, but the one they use here is different, and the way they cook the ugali. It's also different. I'll insert the name of how they call the ugali here. Like the ugali is like sort of um, see matoke how matoke a mashed matoke looks like. It's as soft as that. That's how they cook the ugali, which I found very 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 interesting. It looks like a baby's food, and apart from those apart from the ones I've mentioned there's also they, they also do a lot of veggies which I found very interesting and and it wasn't it wasn't uh, something different from home because it's the same veggies we do eat back home and the way they, this this I don't know I don't know I'll try to get the actual name of the veggie they do here it's uh, it's called what? I'll try to get another uh, clip for it. Um, my bender. Um, okra, okra, okra. The way we cook okra back at home isn't the way they cook okra here. The they it's like it's it's like it's bl it's actually blended blended okra. Yes, blended okra, and then they mix it with green veggies. So when you, so the 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 the, the, the food is actually slimy. I hope I'm getting the words right. It's slimy, so it's not the way we cook back at home. And you didn't even know that that food has okra because it's like it's finely bl blended, like it's really. Hey, yeah. It may blend you up, it looks, it looks like juice, yeah. So it's not the way we just cut the, the, the okra and then cook, and then drain the slimy water. Because the way I cook my okra is I, I cut them, boil them a bit, like five minutes or five, whatever, five minutes, yeah, five minutes, then I drain the slimy water. But here, the slimy water is what makes the food. <laughs> now, what makes the food food? <laughs> if I have, if I'm getting all these things right. So yes, their food is also interesting and it's something to try out. I've tried out full. There's something they call full. I think it's the one I've said full, 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 full master. Yeah, full master. That one, if I'm not wrong, it the. They're like big beans. The beans are so big, and I heard that the beans are from Egypt. Yeah, that one I did like, but whoa, we said that uh, different cultures, different countries do things differently, and it just it's interesting for people who are coming in to just learn and and 
I mean, it's interesting to just learn. There's no harm in learning. And there's no harm in trying out different foods. You never know, you may just like them. Yes. So, um, I like comparing. So, like, way back home, we have kibanda. We call them kibanda skins. So, kibandas are just a simple stall. Either outside your your building place or within the estate. There's usually uh, mama bogas. They're called, or in short, we call them mama bogas. So these are ladies who have stalls for selling veggies, tomatoes, onions, everything that you'd need from the market. As long as it's a food stuff, they even have fish. They fry fish from just within within the estate or within or outside your building. So that's when I came here and like when I was driving from the airport and I was I mean I was a bit I mean I was just like ah, well I'm still new let me, let me let's wait and see maybe they haven't opened or but I, I didn't spot even a kibanda like at a mod. I was wondering, hey, Sasa, how do how do these guys get their food? And like the way we do it in Kenya, you don't have to go to Kikomba or to a market or which other market is that? Yeah, like those big big markets to go get your food because people live far off from this market, and uh, the easiest way of buying food is just step out from your building and you you get the mamambongas outside so it's the opposite of South Sudan and in Juba town there are no kibandas you have to actually go to the market like you have to go to the market either on a daily basis or weekly you have to go to the market so that is one one thing that I I just couldn't get it. Why are there no kibandas here? Cause you could, you could, you could, you could want just a banana or an, an orange, or, or you're cooking and you realize, hey, I don't have uh, pili pili. That's shata. They call shata. They call it shata here in South Sudan. Or shata is uh, Arabic in short. So and. You, you 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 can't access that that means when you're going to the market you have to think hey i need to buy abcd because if i don't then class my food is just not as tasty as you would want it because it's just something that i how do i say it something that i had to deal with like had to accept over time but at the beginning i was just finding it hard why can't we have this mamas? Then I was like, you know, like <laughs> Kenyans are always business minded and we spot, we look around for business opportunity. You know, like we were sharing with some of my colleagues, you know, like, oh, we should open up a, a kibanda here around this place. But then you're asking yourself, who will buy? Because most, most of these people seems like they're used to going to the market most of the time. Or probably every day so that's something that I was shocked to just find out that there are no kibandas within the estate so you have to go to the market so last and not least um, yeah last and not least and if you're a South Sudanese or you're a Kenyan living in South Sudan and there's probably some of the culture shocks that you've experienced here and you're a South Sudanese who live in Kenya, kindly share. Share on the comment section below or just share, just yeah, give us a comment and tell us what's different. How do you do things that probably you you used to do here and you're doing you you, you you're not finding them in Kenya or some of the Kenyans who are here and you're finding hard to move around this place know some of those things so last but not least uh, security process here is just everywhere like 
a lot of roadblocks everywhere. A lot of, I mean, and it's just security process or procedures which we have to deal with. A lot of, uh, and like, I hardly see police in Kenya, like, unless we traffic police. But here, they are all over, and sometimes it's scary because when you see them, you're like, hey, 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 you have to be, you know, do the right thing, <laughs> be on the right track. But all in all, we're saying, yeah, in any country, when you go to any country, you just have to follow the that country's rules. It's okay, it's allowed, it's... That's it. So, when I came here... <laughs> so, something that really got me interested, like... It wasn't a shock, sort of. It was just like, wow, okay, so this is how you count your money. And when you look at their money is bigger. Our Kenyan money is a little bit small, so their money is big. So the way they count their money, I'll actually, I'll try to get the actual footage of how they do it. So the way they count their money, so they hold it like this, like this. This is how they hold it, and then there's a way they do it. I don't know if I can get that. There's a way they do it, so there's a way they they hold it. Yeah, so they actually hold it like this, and there's a way they do it till they count everything, and the money is a lot. In Kenya, we do it this way. We count this way, one by one. Then